As much as people enjoy watching our show, I so love doing it. I stand on my mark. I always get the goosebumps. I'm just Wendy from Jersey. And I never thought in my wildest dreams that my life would be this big. No, I got you, I got you, I got you. All right, you ready for this? Are you ready for this action? It's time for what? You know how we do. If I am wrong and they actually get married, I will eat crow right here on this stage. I'm in the purple chair, so it makes me do things. Imagine if you have both. Pop, pop. What is that, you? Pop, pop! Come at me, Kanye! Gone like the wind. If you're gonna give it to me, give it to me good. Have you ever hooked up with an ex after publicly breaking up? Yeah. If so, And not once, a few times. Okay. Well Or the nightclub. <laughs> the nightclub, honey. The okay. nightclub, okay? Every time those double doors open, my heart pounds almost out of my chest. Here we go, guys. Three, two, one, roll and crack. It's season eight of the Wendy Williams Show. Oh, It's going to be juicy. Now, here's Wendy! Oh! Yes! Oh my God! We made it! You're watching! I mean... <laughs> Vacation's great, but I'm glad it's over. Let's get started. It's time for Okay. of the Wendy Williams Show. It is my honor to be here with you. I'll explain the turban in a bit. In the meantime, a laugh? No, this is fab. You don't like a turban? What? But I'll explain in a moment. In the meantime, I hope you had a terrific summer. I really did miss you. I mean, the reruns were good. I watched along with you, but I'm like, damn, Wendy, when are you? Wait, I am Wendy. <laughs> Because if I wasn't doing the show, this is the show that I would watch. I need this kind of effervescence and fun in my life, you know? A brief synopsis of my summer. Uh, two and a half months off is a long time. I missed you dearly. Um, I did, uh, we went to the Jersey Shore Point Pleasant for a week with my parents and the two Kevins and one of Kevin's friends. We walked the boardwalk, we ate great food. My mom and dad were there. Um, Oh, I swam and felt so comfortable that I swam wigless. Yeah. Um, so shout out to Point Pleasant and everybody that I saw there. I got a chance to stop by Asbury Park. As you know, my original childhood home was in Asbury Park, New Jersey, and they renamed my childhood street Wendy Williams Way. And so, you know, when I'm down there, I like to go by to make sure the block is good. You know, I don't wanna see garbage in the street. I don't wanna see sneakers hanging from, you know, my, my street sign. So shout out to the good people of Asbury Park, New Jersey. Thank you so much. 
Okay. So now, I mean, the hot topics. Where do we go? I guess we start with the most recent. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel, I thought, did a great job last night with the Emmys. <laughs> Congratulations to friend to the show, Marsha Clark, who, I, remember when she came here, she was such a woman's woman and a girl's girl. We had no idea that she's a mess behind the scenes like the rest of us. <laughs> anyway, they were big winners last night, the People versus OJ, five, five <laughs> Emmys including Sterling K. Brown, um, who won for playing Christopher Darden, and Courtney B. Vance, our friend, won for playing Johnny Cochran. Sarah Paulson won for playing our friend, Marsha Clark. <laughs> and I guess on account of people still think O.J. is guilty, Cuba Gooding, who played O.J., got nothing. <laughs> so we're taking it out on Cuba. Anyway, uh, Sarah took Marsha Clark as a date, which I thought was really nice. And um, she's affecting the J-Lo thing, which I, I thought that, yeah, I, yeah, Marsha was there with a blowout. <laughs> so what else? Over the summer, I gagged Mary J. Blige and Ken Do. First of all, divorcing. Second of all, it's taken a really, really nasty turn. We learned about this over the summer. This is when I wanted to hold off on vacation and get back in here in the studio, only I came by and forgot we were doing Do you like the studio? Yeah. Oh my God. I told him. I <laughs> oh. <laughs> By the way, the double doors weigh 400 pounds a piece. Oh. Yeah. Um, anyway, so um, I couldn't get off. I couldn't get off vacation to come back and chat with you all. And you know, I don't really much. You know, I, I entertain you on Facebook, but I don't like to go into stories on Facebook because words don't have emotions. And as you know, I'm very emotional. Um, anyway, um, although I haven't cried, I'm sure. No, that's good. Now stop. <laughs> stop. Anyway, so over the summer, I'm minding my own business, and you were too, and then all of a sudden we hear that Mary and her um, manager husband, Ken Do, have split after 13 years. Well, now, Ken Do is now asking for spousal support, and he also wants her to pay his court fees. Now, let's be fair on both sides, okay? First of all, they were married for 13 years, but there are no kids produced from this union. To the best of my knowledge, Mary never um, adopted um, Ken Do's kids. You know, he, he's got, you know, he had kids before and it wasn't a situation like where he adopted the kids or any, or she adopted the kids or anything like that. So, you know, 13 years of marriage, maybe they had a little property together. Sell the property and go your separate ways. If Ken Do can show Mary, if your accountant can show the receipts that you've given Ken Do, his managerial percentage off everything that you've done, including that chicken commercial that he got you involved with. <laughs> That must, have been, that must have been at a time when you all really needed money. <laughs> By the way, I requested my chair to be about two inches wider, so that made, that, so no, I didn't lose weight over the summer. Look, it's the Dr. Phil effect. My friend, Dr. Phil, you know, he's got those big giant chairs and everybody who sits in them looks real small. I was like, yes, the bigger the furniture, the smaller the person. So I want that too, yes. Yes, chair. And if you're wondering what happened to the old chair, well, you'll find out what we, that, my prince chair, you'll find out what we did with that later on in the show. Anyway, so here's the thing. All right, so Mary will move on. Mary's got plenty of men interested in her, but quite frankly, she needs to go the Tina Turner route. She needs to get herself a nice white man <laughs> who's a bit older than, come on, I'm back, can we talk? <laughs> now look. Turner just seems so much happier after the, the bad Ike years and, and whatnot. And she looks healthy and she's older, but she's older and still dipping it and doing it. I don't know whether Mary is good for Vegas because I'm not trying to go to Vegas to be brought down, going down. I'm like, <laughs> you, like, you have to be in a particular mood to listen to Mary. Like, I like the Mary stuff where she remixes like with the DJ clues and stuff like that, where I'm like getting my groove on. Even when I'm sad, I don't like to listen to sad music. 
there's something about it. But she's got a beautiful voice and certainly she's got a body of work. Maybe a few weeks in, in Vegas, but most importantly, how about move to Europe, get yourself like a nice, what I just told you, <laughs> you know, who's got his own money. And, and Celebrity Net Worth says that Mary, and I'm shocked, I don't believe this, it is worth $10 million. Well, now that's not only for me and you, but that's only in the world of Mary J. Blige. I mean, there, heck, Tyga, I think, might be worth 15, okay? Yep. So I don't really understand um, um, what Ken Do is doing. I would hope that this would be over sooner than later. Mary, just don't fight him. You know, confidentially speaking, you know Mary. <laughs> Mayor. You shorten the name to bring in the friendlies, see what I say? When you, when you call me when, then I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Mayor. <laughs> you know, the streets have been talking about you and Ken Do for a long time. I'm, I mean, over 10 years. And the last time that you were here, Mayor, I recall, <laughs> I recall people saying, you know, my backstage staff, because they, they work the staff, but they're also my spies. They let me know what's going on, you know. <laughs> um, and, but they said that things were just a little contentious backstage, like you guys didn't arrive together and Can Do was only here going through the motions maybe to save face because you're on the Wendy show. And I always feel bad about asking Mary, you know, how, do, do you like the brooch? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, cause to me, cause to me a turban with no brooch is just something stupid on your head. <laughs> You know, a bro and the bigger the brooch, and if it dangles right here, like you could read the future. <laughs> Woo! Yes. Yes. Okay, so last night, I spent an hour that I could probably never get back, but I'm invested. Rob in China. Oh. Well, you could clap, lady in the orange in the front row, you liked it? <laughs> never be scared to say it. It's entertaining. It's entertaining. You can't stop watching it. Well, well, did you see the first episode? Okay, so now you're on to the second. Now, I promised you all last season I would invest, you know, four episodes just to give you an honest opinion, but I started to fade out the first episode, but I'm committed because I promised you all something. Last night focused on Rob's weight and take a look, uh, well, take a look and then we'll discuss. I haven't been answering my phone calls and you just gonna tell me this um, like a few moments before and we have to leave? You know what I mean? This is whack, Rob. Yeah, I just don't really feel like being, I don't know, like looked at like that. By the way, I got a new teacup. <laughs> Simple white. It's available on the website. Anyway, so here's my thought. First of all, I hate that she's belittling him on TV, but what's even more painful is that he's letting it happen and doesn't realize that he's coming off like a mama's boy punk, and she even calls him mama's boy several times. And Black China, I know that you have a bunch of friends on the show, but all, your, all those friends don't even equal one of um, uh, T.I.'s or Tiny's friends, and that would be that girl Shaquana. Shaquana, Shaquana. <laughs> Shekana is the bomber, okay? <laughs> I, I haven't yet, I haven't yet developed an interest at all in any of Black China's friends. I don't even care. And then Rob showed up, um, or not Rob, um, Scott showed up on one of the episodes that I watched and I didn't even really care about that because as we know, Scott would do anything for a paycheck. And then when Chris shows up and calls her Angela, that's the killer part because to me, you know Chris doesn't like this girl. <laughs> Let me tell you how you guys fix this show up if it's not too late. First of all, you gotta get uh, some of the older sisters in there, uh, Rob's older sisters, um, or maybe one of the two. You need some of the Kardashian girls in there or the Jenner girls. And I know that they're not. And if I were them, I wouldn't do it because on account of mom, you know you don't like her. Don't try to drag us into Rob's mess. I'm not doing it, so I wouldn't do it. I'm glad the girls weren't there, but that's what you need to do. Also, you, we need to have lots of scenes, <laughs> this would be epic, with Tokyo Tony and Chris in the same room. Okay?
What a mess. Like, what, what do they talk about? And I'm not, say, I'm not saying one is any better or worse than the other, but what do they talk about? What do they have in common? And I just don't, this, this is a show that it looks like um, they were pressed to put on, but it's got to get better before it gets, well, I'll be, <laughs> I'll be watching it again next um, Sunday as well. I missed you guys so much. No, I, no, no. <laughs> it's so crazy, it's so crazy. <laughs> and you know, all the other shows they debuted last week or the week before, the other daytime shows, and I'm so, I'm sitting at home, I'm jealous, I'm like, damn it, another repeat of Wendy, damn it. But maybe they saved the best for last. <laughs> That, no, that, that's not what happened. I think we're letter, literally letting the last piece of glue and nail settle on our set. We were working like beavers all summer long to get this joint together. Anyway, so Lady Gaga reportedly is performing at this year's Super Bowl. No, not woo. <laughs> She performed the national anthem last year and she did a really good job. There she is, she looked great, she did great. Well, um, this is gonna be her first year headlining the Super Bowl. I didn't realize that. I thought that Lady Gaga had already done the Super Bowl before. Well, she's never done the Super Bowl. Here's why I don't think that she's good for the Super Bowl. But I don't think she's good because I don't believe that uh, Lady Gaga has an all-inclusive base or even a partially inclusive base. She's, she's very specific. You know, like I like Lady Gaga, but she's not a reason for me to, you know, go in the family room with a snack and, you know, put Lifetime on hold in the bedroom. <laughs> you know, I'm not watching the football, but I, I, will, I will watch the halftime show. But it's, she's not a reason to get up out of the bed or change the channel and go watch with everybody else in the house. Um, do you know what I mean? And I think that the Super Bowl used to be one of those events where they would, you know, they, first of all, the halftime always caters to men. And I think that people like Bruce Springsteen and, and um, uh, you know, heck, even uh, James Brown, you know, back in the day, or um, Aerosmith, those were like the kind of halftime performers. Now all of a sudden, we're all becoming a little bit more modern, even men, and um, halftime has become like a family event where the kids come in. But you know who I want to see, Super Bowl committee? Hopefully the ink is not dried on, on Gaga's contract. You know I always have a suggestion. Drake. I just think Drake would be really good at the halftime show, even for the moms and dads who don't know who Drake is, the, your kids know, and be, besides, even the moms and dads who say they don't know who Drake is, you know when the hotline rings, it only means one thing. I, you know, you know these songs. Okay, better than Lady Gaga, and I like Lady Gaga, just not for the Super Bowl at the halftime show. How about Rihanna? Yeah. Okay. All of the men will watch because they like to watch her move. The kids will watch because we know her songs. The women will watch because we've got hair envy and you know body envy or you know old people watch because they're like, wow, to be, how old is she, 27? Something like that, again. She's living her life on her own terms and I can't believe that, that um, Rihanna never performed a Super Bowl halftime and they go to Lady Gaga. And Gaga, please don't send your beehives after me. I'm just making a point. I also think that Jennifer Lopez would be better than you. I think a little half time. Right? Oh, uh, oh my gosh. Because as soon as she performs Waiting for Tonight, I would move the coffee table. You know what I mean? And dance like nobody's watching. Do you remember, do you remember on um, Will and Grace, she performed that song at Rosa's wedding and the shrimp fell on the floor and she was sliding around? Anyway, um, and here's one last suggestion, Super Bowl committee. Puff Daddy and the whole bad boy family. Right?
show, I'll take a poll. Clap if you feel Lady Gaga is good for the Super Bowl halftime. Oh. Well, the people have spoken. So with summer and the vacationing and all the running around and taking care of yourself and sitting in the sun and you know having fun and you know resting, I was getting my eyebrows done <laughs> on my way on a vacation and I'm um, laying there and she's plucking and my phone rings and I'm reaching and I'm laying and she's doing and what? Antoine? Eh. So the reason that I'm wearing my turban is because I am wigless. Wigless, well, this is a little something, but, but I am wigless. My wigologist, Antoine, passed away this summer very untimely. He was only 44 years old and he's been with me through thick and through thin. You know, we do this show, but also I like to take my glams with me when I'm on the road and do stuff. So we've flown, we've stayed in hotels, we've seen random cities. We, you know, um, we had a special connection and he had a special connection even with our son. They were both Leos and somehow that he was always able to explain that whole Leo the Lion thing. He called my mom, Miss Shirley, and my dad, Mr. Tom. My husband really respected and appreciated him. Sometimes on the weekends, when his dance card was free, he would go over to Suzanne's house and see Suzanne and Brendan and the kids. Right, Suzanne? Yes. And, He's a great man. And they would have dinner. Brendan would cook, Suzanne would watch. <laughs> but um, he, you know, it wasn't unusual to come here to the studio and see Antoine sitting with the cameramen and the crew and the guys just yucking it up. He was a really, really special man from Durham. Um, and I will miss you dearly, Antoine. Take a look at the fabulous Antoine. I've said it before and I'll say it again. It's just here. I'm not in love with this wig anymore like I used to be. I like it. Then I should wear it? Then you should wear it. <laughs> I love you. So I'm in love with you. Thank you, wig. You're not a bad looking man. I know. Yeah, it's just hair. And it's just hair. Look at his <laughs> smile. He's so happy. Are you ready to play? Tuesday, Lindy's got music's hottest songs. The rapper The King is here, and he's telling all in the hot seat. Then it's a Wendy exclusive. Tiana Taylor on Kanye. And what's next for the video sensation? Tomorrow on a new Wendy. while we were on, on vacation. So we asked you on my social media, which ones did you want me to discuss? So I'm discussing based on what was uh, the highest request. All right, first of all, <laughs> Jennifer Lopez finally breaking up with Casper Smart. This is like, they're the, you all relax. Okay, first of all, this is like the third time they've broken up. Um, you know, I don't know what the reasoning is, but I would assume it might be the, the usual stuff. Uh, word is, is that they're taking a break, um, and that the, the breakup is pretty bad. Jenna's moving on. She posted on her, um, Instagram, uh, while she was walking here in the city. The side, uh, the sidewalk says, protect your heart. By the way, she's in costume for her, uh, uh her, uh, television show. The drama that she does, the police drama. Um, my thought is that... They will probably end up getting back together. They've broken up before, and who should she date next if she is single? Anybody but Ben Affleck, because I've been reading things. I mean, he was really good looking at the time that he was with you, Jen, but now he's just become a disheveled mess. And you don't have to, I mean, he has. And uh, by the way, I don't believe what I've been reading that she's dating Calvin Harris either. I'm still holding out for her to get back to, with Puffy. Is that wrong? <laughs> Is that wrong? 
<laughs> and as for Casper, who knows he, who he'll move on to. I mean, at this point, when you're with Jennifer Lopez, or you've already been touched by such stardom, you can pretty much get with any girl. Case in point, that um, Nicki Minaj's old boyfriend who's on that reality show. You know what? She must be stabbing herself in the eyeballs <laughs> at the idea that, you know, he's now on a reality show, you know, just bad on every level. Anyway, okay, and you also requested me to talk about Chris ba Brown being arrested over the summer. Well, you heard about this woman, okay? Chris was apparently having a party at his house, and um, she claims that he pulled a gun on her inside the home. Well, there was a le allegedly a standoff, and then Chris flipped out um, after she said something. She said something about one of the guy's jewelry in in Chris's house. And some people are saying that she was complimenting the jewelry, but other people are saying that she looked at the jewelry and said, that's not real. And that the dude was like to Chris, oh, who's this? Who's this talking slick in here? And Chris was like, get her out of here. Hold on. Because here's the big part to me. <laughs> so apparently there were all kind of weapons in the house. And Chris allegedly threw the weapons out of the window. But now, first of all, when you throw a gun out the window, doesn't it pop off? <laughs> just, just randomly throwing it. And I don't know whether the weapons were guns, maybe it was an axe, knives. I don't know. Allegedly, um, the woman has a very, very shady past. Now, let's keep in mind, Chris Brown does not need to be having parties at his house. This was a friend of a friend who got in, you know, this woman right here. Um, but allegedly, uh, she's got, uh, you know, quite a situation with herself for a variety of things for which I remember none of them from our morning meeting this morning. <laughs> Here's my thing, Chris, for the hundredth time. Stop having parties at your house. <laughs> no. With a fact, stop having parties, period. When you have a good time, I just, you know, go to the club or you know what? Maybe only have a set. You know, a set is different than a party. A party is where, you know, all kind of people are around. A set is like 10 people and they puff, puff, pass. <laughs> That's a set. A set. <laughs> and then he's got roommates. And the roommates live there in the house with him, which I don't understand why grown people have roommates if they can afford to live by themselves. I mean, if you are scared to live by yourself, then you certainly don't have your friends live with you. You have people who are employed to look after you, like a security guard, maybe, you know, a housekeeper who sleeps with a gun, <laughs> or something like that. You know, you know, to me, when you get to the level of Chris Brown, I, I look at friends as being, for the most part, bottom feeders. People who are looking to set you up. And for all you know, this girl could be part of a setup ring as well, Chris. And some of your friends in your house that you call friends, they're not your friends. And, uh... For our first day back, season eight, I'm giving you a gift. I'll talk to you about Hiddleswift, for which I don't care. I, I don't care. Do you care? That's what I'm doing. I don't care about them. I don't care about them, you guys. When I heard about it, I like I ride, rolled, rolled my eyes and sucked my teeth. I told you that they only got together because he was trying to be the next James Bond. He didn't get that role, so now it's over. I told you, you know, she likes to get with guys, you know, on a regular basis because it keeps us talking. And, and it, everything helps when you're trying to sell a lot of records and be popular. You got to sing the music. You got to tour with the music. You got to be on Hot Topics. You know, you got to be in the life of If you want to be on the tip of everybody's tongue because the celebrity world is so competitive. I don't care that they broke up. I never even cared that they were together. I don't care anything about um, her love life. Because I feel as though she's having the same kind of fun that I'd be having if I were her age and had all that money. <laughs> In other words, don't take anything serious. I am very wealthy, and I will dismiss him when I'm ready, or he will dismiss me after he finishes using me. Either way, um, Tom, you have been added to Taylor's long list of exes. There you go. <laughs> oh. oh, 
I'll let you know when I care. In the meantime, you know, here at the show, I try to be, you know, equal opportunity in the hot topics. I don't just do the stuff that I want to hear about. Sometimes I know that there's stuff I don't care about, and so I do it for you. So that was your early Christmas gift there. <laughs> Um, by the way, the Video Music Awards on MTV aired while we were on hiatus, and uh, the big star of the show, which, by the way, I thought it was a really good show, but the biggest star, I think, was Tiana Taylor. She, um, she's, she's kind of, like, on par with Rihanna on how she dances, and she's all flexible and does stuff, so she's going to be here tomorrow. Uh -huh. Daytime exclusive, and I told her, I said, Look, wear something like that because I'm, I'm gonna ask you to do stuff, and you're not gonna ask me, tell me, Wendy, I want to teach you. Nope, uh, you don't have to teach me, I want to see you do it. <laughs> Tiana Taylor, we'll be here tomorrow. Keep clapping, everybody. Up next, we've got Shalyn Lester, she's here with the inside scoop or Keisha Knight Pulliam's divorce trial. So, don't go far. Thank you. dedicated to Prince. See? It's right here because it's time for the inside scoop. And here to dish is the senior editor from Star Magazine. Give it up to our longtime shady friend, Shady Shallon Lester. Yes, Shallon. Yes, Shady as always. Yes. All right. Break it down. Keisha Knight Pulliam. Right. Keisha, well, first, to get the real deal on her divorce, you have to go back to the beginning, which was not that long ago. Her and ex-NFL player Ed Harwell got married in January after four long months of dating. Four, and no prenup. Oh, we'll get to that. Four months of dating. Yeah, so that happened in January. Cut to July. She's on Instagram. I'm pregnant. I'm having a baby girl. Hashtag blessed. So excited. Cannot wait. One week after that, Ed files for divorce. Oh. Awkward. But here's the real bombshell part. In the divorce filings, he says... I'm not the father. I want a paternity test. I don't think this baby is mine. And this is pretty rare, actually, to see in a celebrity divorce where you're not overtly accusing the other person of cheating to just say, well, this baby isn't mine, but I don't know whose it is. And here's what happened. Ed claims that a month into their marriage, he sat her down. It was like, we have made a terrible mistake. I'm not in love with you. This marriage was a horrible idea. And she's like, no, I want a baby. I got to have a baby. Okay, okay, okay. I believe that part. I do, too. I'm sorry. I, I believe that part, uh, Keisha. I, I mm -hmm. do believe that you were so desperate to have mm -hmm. a baby, and because you were raised a Cosby, um, having a baby without the benefit of marriage yes. might be something against yes. the Cosby way. Only now Bill Cosby has set the bar <laughs> real low for all you all. all right. so. Co Cosby way is out the door. Yes. Um, but I, I believe that she married yep. and pushed for a baby, pushed and he baby. might have said pause. Right. Um, she's got more money than him. Right. But she signed no prenup. Right. Keisha, have you lost your mind? <laughs> so now what's going to happen? So he, his whole theory is she could have been sleeping around with someone else, or he actually thinks she might have been getting in vitro behind his back, which seems intent. In vitro is not a subtle process, as a lot of women know. You're injecting yourself. You're going to the doctor all the time. I don't see how you could just freestyle that and not have your husband know. But he says they stopped sleeping together. So she, on the other hand, is like, he was abusive, he has a terrible temper. Abusive how? Mentally and emotionally abusive, that he has this crazy erratic temper, which we see in ex NFL players, unfortunately. But th this is what I don't understand. If he's so awful, she's filed a restraining order. Why do you care that he doesn't want to be the father of this baby? Take that baby and go. And hasn't, hasn't he claimed that she was abusive to him as well? He comes right back, says she's the crazy one, I'm walking on eggshells around her. It's horrifying and then you get into the financial aspect which okay. is a mess as you, as you said no prenup she wants she's actually being i think pretty reasonable considering how unreasonable this whole situation is she just wants to come out of the marriage with everything she went into it with all the cosby earnings she wants sole temporary custody of the house that they share and uh to she's willing to split anything that they earned while they were in the marriage like eight long months like how much could it have been 43 dollars fine whatever Break i'm not even doing that Hand him a hundred, he'll give you change. It's it's like, <laughs> but she says, and well, we hear that they reached some sort of financial settlement after he filed for divorce. Okay. But we don't know how much it is. It's confidential. But he apparently isn't paying up. 
And now she wants him put in jail until he does pay. But he probably does not have the money. This guy is not rolling in it. Have, have you looked up his net worth? Oh, there, it's net? like looking up mine. What's up <laughs> mine? What Shady Shallon does it again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nobody, he that. And he declared bankruptcy in 2009 after he divorced Lisa Wu from the Real Housewives of Atlanta. And he had a house going to foreclosure. And just two days after he filed for divorce, he sold his Atlanta mansion that he bought for like $1.2 million. He sold it for about $700,000. Huge loss. Massive catastrophic loss. Which tells me he needs money. This is terrible. It's just a nightmare. Well, it's horrible. Well, good luck with your pregnancy. She is going to need it. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't mean that in a shady way. I do. I always mean it in a shady way. Okay. Um, Halle Berry and yes. um, her, oh, Olivier have called off their divorce. Yeah, a little bit of semi-good news there. I think this is good news. Uh, kind so, of. Uh, so in California, when you file for divorce, Halle did about a year ago, you have a year to kind of like proceed with that or it essentially expires so the court was like yo are we doing this what's happening and it looks like she's just gonna let that filing lapse the big issue between them is she did not like his controlling nature and his anger issues personally i do not think those things go away in a year or ever hopefully right. hallie knows something we do not well because <laughs> I, he didn't he attack a paparazzi in the airport with a baby seat he's attacked a lot of people and yeah. her baby daddy but yeah in the airport he shoved an employee with a baby seat and that guy sued him yeah like really shoved him <laughs> i'm sorry really, really was he in a wheelchair and did i see a wheelchair <laughs> he, i don't know if he started in a wheelchair but he ended up in the wheelchair they shoved him in it well we'll be following these stories thank you right. Shannon. challenge it's nice to see you for more than this on these Go to wendyshow.com. Up next, everybody, I hit the streets in New York to quiz people on hot topics. Don't go far. <laughs> New York and quiz people in a game of hot topics for cash. Take a look. Yeah. Hey, I'm here in New York City seeing if people know their hot topics. And if they do, I've got money for them. Season eight. Eight dollars. Anything better than nothing? For eight bucks. Yes. Who's Amber Rose partner on Dancing with the Stars? Go! Back some. Yeah. Go! Soup dumplings. I don't know what's going on over here. Oh. Name three of the Jersey Housewives. Then go. Uh, Ashley, Crystal, and Snooki. Um, what was the other one? Uh, Topanga. Teresa. Um, good, good. Let's, let's forget Jersey Housewives. You're going back to Jersey Shore. Nikki, Nikki's one of them. Nikki, that's it. Got to be Ashley on the show somewhere else. No, there's no Ashley. Jacqueline? Yes! Oh, yes. yeah! I'm just going to give you $8 so you can go somewhere. Oh, my God! And get this oh, all together. Oh, I like your green hair. Thank you so much. I love you on everything. Rob and China are having a baby. Uh, what is the sex of the baby? Uh, it's a boy. Wrong! Ah, girl, they're having a girl. Do you care? Uh, not about Black China, but about Rob Kardashian forever. Really? What's the name of the guy Taylor Swift most recently broke up with? Go! Um, uh, Tom Kiddleston? Yes! Yes! Um, get it up for me. And I'll give you eight more dollars I need every this. one of her <laughs> ex-boyfriends that you can name. Kelly Harris. <laughs> um, one of the Jonas Brothers. The, no. No? You have to get to the right one. <laughs> All right, fine. Are you sure it is? <laughs> I've been known. Hey! Hey, what's up? Right, I'm all right. What? Yeah. Are we dressed like? All right, Chris Brown's daughter. What's her name? Oh, uh, what? Yes! Yeah. I knew you'd get that. Mmm. Kanye West song. Um, Fade. Okay. Who is the woman starring in the video? Sick body, new baby, NBA boyfriend. Tiana Taylor? Yes, girl! I mean, I mean, yes! 
where we go back in pop culture history uh, to see... <laughs> We're just getting started here. Okay? <laughs> First day back, a little sloppy. I just see how much you remember. Let's meet our player. What's your name? Where are you from? Hi, I'm Maka from Canada. How you doing? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, so here's your question. Um, on this day in Hot Topics in 2013, I talked about Miley Cyrus's first single reaching number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Which mm -hmm. song was it? Was it Wrecking Ball? Was it Party in the USA? Or The Climb? Well, Miley is my girl, so it's Wrecking Ball. Yes! Congratulations! We're a little bit more time here in America because you won a two-night stay at Harris Resort in Atlantic City. Can you guess who this is? Oh, we do it now? Oh. What else do that? Courtney is from New Orleans, and it's time to play Celebrity Face Swap. Um, I'm going to show you, Courtney, a picture of two celebrities blended together, and you have to figure out who both of them are, and then we'll give you a prize. Don't help her, okay? Let's see the picture and go. Oh, tell, oh. Me, tell me if you want a hint. Okay, yes. <laughs> the one at the top is black, and the one at the bottom is white. Okay, I know Adele. I see Adele. Okay. Okay. You're on your way. Okay, one more. <laughs> um, uh, yes! Beyonce. Yes! Yes! to be back tomorrow. Superstar rapper The Game is here to clear up all kind of innuendo. Plus, real-life hot topic Tiana Taylor and her flexibility is here. Yes! And don't forget to tune in to Wendy Style Squad tonight at 10 o'clock on BET. I love you for watching today. Thanks for waiting. We'll be back tomorrow. Bye-bye. Nice!